Hi everyone and welcome to Lendy's monthly financial and property update. This month we're in July and it's officially the start of the new financial year so welcome to FY21. In today's video we're going to review the current economic climate. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the government stimulus packages that have recently been announced and ultimately what is the impact on the property market. With me today we have David Hyman, our co-founder and CEO, so welcome David. Thanks, Sarah. So Dave, let's jump right in um, and start by getting you to give us maybe an overview of where you feel the current Australian economic climate is, and then I guess more importantly, where are we headed? Thanks, Zara. Great place to start. Before I jump into Australia, I might jump into sort of more of a global outlook to, to, to begin with. So the world economic outlook forecast a 4.9 percent decline in 2020. Now I think it's a, it's a bit steeper than some of the estimates that were starting to surface at the beginning of the crisis. It's about sort of 1.9 percentage points below where it was originally going to be, and so it's had a bigger negative impact in the first first half than was originally anticipated. With all of that said, we're, we're, most economists, um, including the, the, the World Economic Outlook, uh, are expecting a pretty big rebound in 2021 at this stage in the forecast. So they're, they're sort of looking at the mid 5% levels from a growth perspective. And while that sounds like a really strong headline global growth rate, it's still going to leave us kind of globally at a level that's well below where we're expected to be at the start of this year. So we'll still be sort of five or six percentage points below where things were sort of expected to be at the start of the calendar calendar year of 2020 before this pandemic hit. I guess moving that down into Australia, I think one, probably one of the biggest things that people are looking at is the unemployment rate. So um, we've typically had really low unemployment for the last kind of decade, had really, really low unemployment rate down in the sort of fours and fives. We're now up at about 7.1%. And probably more concerning that's not picked up in the unemployment rate numbers is just the number of people that have had their hours reduced or they're seeing less take-home pay as a result of the crisis. So, for example, over the course of May, about 700,000 people lost their jobs, which is, which is horrible. Um, but over 1.5 million people in addition to that had their hours cut or reduced. So the underlying rate of sort of shock to the employment market is much worse than the headline rate suggests. Um, and obviously it's the key number that people are going to be watching as things like JobKeeper start to get slowly unwound over the next kind of three to six months. And with all of that relative uncertainty in the job market, obviously that's quite a big jump in unemployment. There's a big unknown there in those that have had reduced hours. What are we seeing in terms of a knock-on effect or an impact in the specifically in the property market, if any, of that and also the, the kind of bigger economic issues yeah so i think the way to think about that is when this crisis became evident really sort of early to mid-march what we saw very very quickly not just in australia but around the world was massive economic stimulus uh, or fiscal stimulus in the form of a bunch of different packages so you know the one that's talked about the most is job keeper it would be the, the most expensive package there's millions of aussies on it and it's keeping a lot of businesses afloat at the moment in addition to that, though, specifically to the property market, there's the home builder scheme, which was recently announced. Um, and so while the impacts of the home builder scheme haven't flowed through into the numbers just yet, there's certainly, and I'll touch on this kind of, I guess, a little bit later on today, um, just kind of ultimately what that looks like and, and what it means. If we look at the actual impact of the market today, the property market's been relatively resilient. So there was a whole bunch of economists market participants, et cetera, at the start of the crisis saying, you know, we're going to see prices fall off a cliff. We're going to see 30% declines. We're going to see 80% volume declines. Um, and thankfully to this stage that hasn't played out. So I'll start with prices. Um, prices have seen relatively modest declines. So we saw a sort of 0.7% decline in April and in May was about a 0.4% decline. So just over 1% across the two months. And when you consider where prices were 12 months ago, if you look at across the combined capital cities, we're still up in most places, um, high single digits or into the double digits on a 12 month rolling basis. So while we've seen sort of a few headline declines, like the actual story there from a property price perspective is really, really positive. It's mostly been underpinned by kind of two things. So low stock levels and that's driven low volume. So from a consumer sentiment perspective, we saw, um, relatively sharp declines in consumer sentiment over March and April, but massive recoveries through 
through sort of May and June. So both the Westpac and the ANZ Roy Morgan surveys, I think ANZ specifically is up 42% since the end of March. So that increased level of consumer confidence coupled with really, really low stock levels has really kind of put a floor under prices. We're now starting to see a bunch of that backlog of stock come back onto the market. So we've seen stock levels and listing levels slowly inch up over the last kind of six or eight weeks. And we're now sort of 42, 43% higher relative to the low in May. So in in a few short weeks, uh, we've seen a pretty strong recovery there. So I guess the, the time to watch this, this, this space in the markets really over the next three or four months as those listings kind of ultimately get to the sale position. But ultimately the message in the property market is, is a relatively positive one. Um, pricing's held and, and volumes of, while they've declined, they haven't, certainly haven't fallen off a cliff. You mentioned at the beginning um, of, of that, the home builder grant, it was obviously relatively well received when it was first announced. Then there was a little bit of a moment of confusion just around exactly what it meant and what who could access it. Are you able to maybe talk to us a little bit more in detail about that specific um, stimulus grant? Yeah, sure. So the Home Builder Grant was really, if you take a step back and look at why it exists, it's really there to bring forward economic activity that would otherwise be sort of held off in a period of um, either recession-based economy activity, uh, economic activity, or or just general levels of low sentiment. Um, so what really what it, what what it is in a nutshell is it's a grant for people who are either renovating their property or buying a new property. Um, there are some catches to it. So there's some relatively tight bands of spend levels, income levels, etc. So if you're an individual, um, you can't earn more than $125,000. And if you're a couple, um, that limit is $200,000. Um, you need to be spending between $150,000 and $750,000 of your own money uh, as part of the renovation. So that can't include the grant. Um, and the house you're renovating must be worth less than $1.5 million. So you can see that it's not targeted at the super high income earners. It's really targeted at, at the mass of Australia, which is fantastic. It's a great very very targeted and surgical stimulus package the new builds the total value of the new build must be seven hundred and fifty thousand um, or less uh, including the value of the land so again it's not targeted at someone who's buying a you know a, a property in the north shore of sydney and spending one and a half million dollars on a new build it's really targeted at those new home display villages or house and land package type um, scenarios um, but if you think about this, this is not um, this in combined with some of the other stimulus measures that already existed. And, in, and WA is a great example where if you're a first home buyer and you're looking to buy a new home and you qualify based on the income value and the price of the property, you not only get the $25,000 home builder grant, um, you also get the first home buyer grant in WA, which is sort of in a similar sort of range. You also get stamp duty exemptions and a number of the builders over there are doing um, you know, huge promotions. So there's some really strong incentives for people to get into the market and just you know stoke this economic activity and obviously you know take advantage of this free money while they're at it. Well, obviously there's a whole range of homeowners out there who've kind of weathered the storm more recently, whether that was um, within their own sort of job and um, they're kind of coming out maybe feeling a little bit more secure, but are still slightly concerned they're not on the very best rates or product. What can they be doing now that they're feeling maybe just a little bit more steady um, to secure their financial position in your in your mind? Yeah, so I mean, this is an interesting one because, um, you know, the crux of the Lendy business specifically has been to help people get into homes or refinance their existing loans in a much easier way. And our value proposition has always existed on relatively slim uh, percentage point savings for consumers on their mortgages. Uh, but what played out off the back of the pandemic and the relevant stimulus measures is we've seen a massive decrease in the rate to borrow are for new mortgages. And a lot of these have been targeted in fixed rate style products. So what that means is if you're on an existing variable rate product, and while you know we talk a bit at Lendy about the loyalty tax often, specifically these products were targeted at fixed rate customers. So if you're on an existing product, you, you, would, you wouldn't have naturally moved onto these by default. So we're in this sort of situation where um, the lowest principal and interest owner occupier fixed rates are really in the low twos, 2.09% is offered by a number of banks and lenders out there. And 
if you if you consider where and when we look at Lendy data and customers coming to to the Lendy platform, we've got customers that are sort of often in the low threes from a variable rate perspective. Um, they can be saving almost as much as one whole percentage point through refinancing. So, if you're in that bucket of people who, regardless of whether you've had your hours reduced or you, you're at risk of losing your job, just You've now got a bit of free, free air, the kids are back at school, although can't say the same for Victoria at the moment, unfortunately, and you've got time to, to look at refinancing. Um, it's, there's never been a better time in the history of mortgage competition to be, to be looking at switching from one bank to the other. And it can really mean meaningful savings, not just in your monthly cash flow, but in the time it takes off to, to, to pay your mortgage off. So we really recommend people take a look, um, negotiate with your bank, or if you're not sure what to do, speak to a home loan specialist and they can help. Yeah, that's great advice. I think the other thing is um, there was some pretty compelling cashback offers out there. I think sometimes when the banks stop advertising those offers, people think those offers don't exist anymore, um, which is actually incorrect. They're still out there. Um, they're just not advertising them. So if you can talk to someone who knows, you can often still access them. So that combined with those savings, you know, could really help somebody um, if they just wanted some savings in the back pocket every month. Yeah, that's right. Look, those cashback offers are really great tools to help cover some of the costs of refinancing, which is still quite low these days, um, often less than $1,000 in, in, in costs along the way, which often gets capitalized into the loan. But these cashback offers are um, sometimes two, three, or $4,000, depending on the lender, and can often be per property if you've got multiple properties in a portfolio. So it can be a really, really lucrative offer to take advantage of, and we really recommend. Again, as Zara mentioned, they're not always advertised, so... Uh, speak to someone in the know and you can often find out what's what's out there in the market i think the big takeaway is do some research and do some checking because you just you just don't know what you could be saving at any given moment at the minute given um, all of the amazing packages and stimuluses and cashbacks and rates there's a lot out there so so get searching thanks so much dave again super super helpful really great to kind of cut to the crux of it um, and get your take um, so thanks so much for taking the time again to talk to us. No drama, it's always great to chat. As always, we'll continue to provide these regular updates each month, um, really just to help homeowners um, and those wanting to become homeowners keep informed about the market and what's real and what's not. If you, again, as I said before, if you have any suggestions for topics you would like us to cover or you would like um, to ask Dave, you can absolutely put put those in the comments below. We also have a whole bunch of other update videos um, on our YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe by hitting the bell and you'll get notified, but also hop on over to our channel now with everything from how to refinance to what to fix rate. So if you have any questions about mortgages, home loans, market in general, that's the place to start. Thanks again for joining us. I hope you find this helpful. Give us a like if you like it and um, we'll see you next month. Take care.